Do you want to start closing more candidates? Well, you better know why they're declining your offers. Check out this video right now and I'll talk about the eight most common reasons why people decline. Hey, welcome to The Millionaire Recruiter. I'm Brandon Rooney, your Millionaire Recruiter. If you have not seen this channel before, it's all about upping your game in the recruiting industry. So let's get to it. Um, as it is a candidate-driven market, boy, is it rough. So offers are getting declined more and more often. But in my opinion, there's about eight reasons why. Um, there's probably hundreds of reasons why, but eight are the most common. And so as you're talking to candidates, you can at least try to get ahead of some of them, some you can work with, but it's really about being in the know. So if you're in the know with the candidate, maybe we can work it out, right? So number one, yes, you guessed it, is total cash compensation. Um, money is what makes the world go around. A lot of people aren't gonna leave jobs and take a pay cut. There has to be lots of other reasons why, which you're gonna get to, of course, in that first recruiter phone screen, and you're gonna hear their candidate motivators, talk about it first. Lots of times candidates can't affect total cash comp. However, they can help massage what's going on, therefore talking to the key stakeholders, talking to the candidate, hopefully finding a happy medium because a lot of companies can be flexible. A lot of them don't lose someone over five to $10,000. It's not worth it in the long run. Hopefully your company knows that, um, but maybe you can play around with the sign-on. Maybe they need a sign-on because then maybe they're buying a new house, maybe because they're leaving their company and they need to buy their equity or otherwise they lose it. There's all sorts of reasons why people want sign-ons. Maybe some people get jazzed when they have a bonus, you know, like that, that excites them. They want to control their own destiny and they want it to be performance-based bonus. So there's all sorts of stuff that can happen, um, but you had to talk it out. And so hopefully you can overcome that. And you know, in the beginning, um, like I say, when you're going through offers, you should kind of have a vibe as to what direction it's going to go based on those candidate motivators. With that said though, candidate motivators can change. So be careful. A second most common reason why people decline offers is benefits. Sadly, this is one in my opinion, recruiters cannot touch. You should know if the candidate is so driven by benefits, which is maybe they have a big family, is so medical is really important. Um, I don't know, maybe their kids are going through, uh, they're getting braces, it's expensive, they have to have orthodontics, uh, maybe it's that 401k um, that they absolutely have to contribute to. Whatever the reason, benefits are, are sticky, and you should know that in that recruiter phone screen. So in my opinion, it should not come down that you're shocked that they're declining because of the benefits, you should know if it's important before, and then you should know what your company's benefits are and discuss it with them first. So this one, in my opinion, of all the eight should definitely have not come down to the end. Number three is career advancement. So that's, I mean, that's the most exciting part. What kind of uh, career tra trajectory <laughs> um, do they have? Like what's, what, what's gonna get them up in the morning? What's gonna get them excited? Are they challenged? Um, you know, so this is something, again, you should kind of know what they're looking for. However, there's a lot of teams out there. Remember, it's candidate-driven, so they have so many other options. A lot of teams can really bring it when it comes to career advancement, and people are, companies are getting better at having that set in place and hopefully selling that throughout the process. So you as a recruiter need to make sure that if you know it's one of their motivators, as it's a lot of motivators for people, that it's talked about and they're never gonna get to the end and be like, wait, is this the right place for me to advance my career? You should know that, but, and there's also a lot of ways that you can entice the candidate too, because if you know that that's their motivator, then you're gonna get them on the phone with leadership as high up the, you know, up the, uh, the ladder as you possibly can, because that also shows that you're really interested and you care. Fourth reason, most common reason people decline job offers is bad culture. So they just don't feel like they fit perhaps, or maybe they just got bad vibes. Like the interviewer didn't seem interested. Maybe he was distracted. Um, there can be all sorts of stuff. Maybe they uh, uh, they don't believe in like the work work hard, play hard, and that's something that you're really set on. So there's there's all sorts of sorts of things there when it comes to culture fit for sure. Um, even maybe down to their values on the website. That is something that is a hard hard thing to predict, but. Hopefully when you're going back and thinking through, wait a minute, I knew that this was really important to this person and the culture at this company maybe isn't what they're looking for. 
Number five is work-life balance. Um, yeah, people are really, really looking for a work-life balance. You don't have it, they're not interested. And this can even go down to culture fit, really, this can kind of overlap. But, you know, people want to be inspired at their jobs, they want to do a great job, they want to advance, they want to do these things, but they also don't want to be there 80 hours a week. They don't want to be responding to emails at one o'clock in the morning. So um, that does go to culture and how the company just lives and works, has, has that, uh, th that fit, right? So it's super, super important to people. What is happening a lot and why uh, people are declining jobs is bad candidate experience. So this could also, again, go to a little bad culture fit. I feel like that the culture fit can kind of overlap a few, but uh, this goes to um, the company's not responsive, so the candidate doesn't feel special where they have all these other people calling them. This can go to um, missed or canceled interviews at the last minute. Um, that's not great because they have a job already and they already schedule out a block of time for you, and so that's not a great look. There's all sorts of things that can happen. Um, the worst, in my opinion, especially when we're talking about offer right now, is how long it takes sometimes a company's face-to-face -face or on-site interview, whatever you call it, the last stage of the interview, it takes, if it takes longer than two days to get that person's feedback, even that's a long time. I, I knew a client that took eight days and that's just unacceptable in my opinion. Um, so if that does happen, you as a recruiter, hopefully you're having that great candidate experience. You're still letting that person know. They know to expect it in eight days so they're not agonizing, you know, um, during that entire time because that's just a bad experience. And typically, if you have a bad candidate experience, then it's not going to get any better when you join their company. That might be just how they treat their, their people there. And that's just an icky feeling. So be careful with that. Also, I don't think you want to work at a company like that either. Uh, so the seventh reason why people are declining jobs right now is um, commute versus remote. So it's all about location. Uh, definitely with a lot of a lot of places turning to remote first versus remote friendly. Um, there's still some sticklers out there that are like, you have to come into the office. And one, if it's not close, it's definitely a deal breaker because a lot of the companies are you're able to be flexible with being remote and that's just what's going on right now so that can 100 be a deal breaker um, again this is something that i feel like you should have already known if this was going to come at the end um, benefits and commute for sure are biggies that you should have you should have talked about in the beginning and you should know what they preferred now with that said i had had people say oh my god no i love the company so much it doesn't matter how far i can commute well, then when push comes to shove, they have two offers, they pay the same, maybe they're just as exciting and one's a commute, one's not. So it happens. And the final eighth reason why people are declining jobs right now, and I find this to be I don't know, kind of fun, is your gut just says no. So people are getting very particular. They're thinking about it more. They're thinking bigger picture. Um, and maybe just something that they can't put their finger on it just didn't really go right. It didn't feel right. And so, you know, uh, we, we try to say that business isn't personal, but it's like one of the most personal things to you. Remember, we talk about a lot in these videos is that, you know, you have, depending on where you are in your career and what you got going on in your life, it could be, you know, family, friends, and it could be career. And throughout your life is what's more important. Um, so you're spending a lot of time at your at your job um, with your with your colleagues. Um, so, you know, if things aren't quite right, maybe a conversation rubbed you the wrong way, maybe the project that you're not too interested in, you thought you were gonna work on another project, and you're just kind of like, eh, I'm not really excited because if you're gonna switch jobs, you need to be really excited. You have to be pumped up. You have to be like, I'm doing this challenge, or I'm working with this person, or I've got this career trajectory, or oh my God, I got this offer. Like it has to, you have to feel that. And so whenever I, I come down to a close, um, one of my personal favorite things to say is like, look, close your eyes. Where are you sitting? What are you working on? Like, and a lot of times people's initial gut reaction goes to that choice. And so if their gut says no, their gut says no. And I'm sorry, as a recruiter, it's hard to say, it's hard to change this one. Um, you can still talk it out and you can have them do a pros and cons list. Um, but yeah, but it's challenging. And you know what? Um, the choice is yours, right? The choice is the candidates and, and it just is what it is. But um, 
those are my most uh, common things and reasons why I see people declining jobs. So we'll go over that again really quickly. Total cash comp, benefits, career advancements, maybe not there, bad culture fit, work-life balance, bad candidate experience, shame on you company, um, the commute uh, is too far or they're not remote like you want, and then your gut just says no. So um, hopefully this can help because if you know those are the most common reasons, hopefully you know that those eight things you're gonna talk about in that first recruiter screen and throughout the process with the candidate and hopefully you can get ahead of some, some of them and just cross them off the list as not a possibility and not a reason for them to decline the offer. So good luck with all of that for sure. And I really wanna say, you know, thank you for being patient with me on the Millionaire Recruiter course. Uh, I did pull it a few months ago, but again, uh, if you don't know, I pulled it because with COVID and with it being a Canada driven market, there's just so many more interesting techniques that I feel like you really need in order to be successful. Plus, I have quite a dream of mine and um, for this course to be the first accredited course um, for recruiters. And so that's in the works. It is coming. It will be worth the wait. I absolutely promise you. It's a very cool learning management system. It has some, you know, VR in it and it's just cool. Um, the, the retention and what you get from it is just is really cool. And so that will most likely launch in March, if I can get it out in February, I feel like it's coming so soon, then I will, um, and you guys will be the first to know. So like, subscribe, definitely check uh, check me out on The Millionaire Recruiter so you can just sign up for the email list and you'll be literally the first to know. <laughs> All right, well, thanks so much. I will see you every Thursday at noon. And don't forget that money is just a vessel to do all the amazing things you wanna go do in life. Go do it, go live it, have fun. See you next week.